Welcome to the Podunk Polymath, a podcast dedicated to the sentiments of a secular, sarcastic, screwed up Southern SJW and skeptic. I'm your host, Chris. Come on in. This is episode lucky number 13 of the Podunk Polymath podcast. Thanks again for joining me for another fun-filled and delightful episode, or at least I hope you think so. Didn't have too much to say pre-ramble this week, except that you need to go out and vote. Election day is November 8th, I believe. This episode will be the last episode before election day, so get out and vote. No matter who you vote for, go out and vote, even though... Well, if you vote for Trump, you're probably not listening to this podcast anyway, so I can safely probably tell you to go fuck yourself, because he's a narcissistic, bully, misogynist, racist prick, among many other things I could say, but I think I'll say all on that right now. So, go out and vote. I voted early a couple days ago, and I held my nose, so you'll pr- y'all probably know what that means, but... You know, I don't want to get too political on that because everybody's got their own thing on that. And there's lots of lots of disagreements regarding this election has been very heated. Uh, even among people who generally agree on most other things, it's still been a lot of a lot of arguments and a lot of a lot of vitriol. Of course, you know, I guess people get when it, especially this election, when you got somebody like Trump who's basically something dangerous. You know, well, danger city. To be quite honest with you, even though that term's not the greatest term in the world, he's 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 dangerously unprepared and uh, incompetent for the office. So, anyway, I won't go too much more into that. Y'all already know what's going on, and you can make your own decision. So, go vote uh, November eighth or before, if possible. Of course, early voting is probably over by now in most places, but or mail in a ballot. Whatever you can do, however you do it. I was going through iTunes uh, and just messing around, and I happened to look because on iTunes there's different countries, and you can there's a little flag at the bottom, and I said, hmm, let me check the Canadian ratings area. I have two customer reviews from uh, O Canada, and O Canada is has been nice. I got one from Salt City, and it says great podcast. Heard about the podcast on Twitter, great stuff. Thank you very much, Salt City. And then finally, he's back from the true Sam I am. Loved Chris on UTBB, and he's finally back on the air. I'm only two episodes in, but I love it so far. Great guests. That's really heartwarming, actually, to be honest with you. I'm not being sarcastic because it's cool that somebody was happy I was coming back on and he knew who I was anyway. So that's awesome. Thanks, Sam I am. I appreciate it. That really made my night, actually. So anyway, and this week on the Palaver, I have somebody that I'm a Facebook friend with who agreed to come on and speak to me about an interesting church he went to. And it's an, a cool story. I hope you enjoy the Palaver, and I hope you enjoy the show as well, of course. Stay tuned and go vote. I'm going to tell you once again, go vote. Did I mention to go vote? Go vote. Do you want to live in a world where ignorance rules? Ignorance would have you believe that the world is a terrifying place ruled by an unknowable and invisible force that demands your love upon pain of eternal torture. Ignorance would have you believe that the sun is a horse-drawn chariot, the earth is flat, and that faith, the evidence of things not seen, is a virtue. Ignorance would have you believe the South is filled only with ignorant rednecks who've never worn shoes and that it is a dangerous place for the open-minded to visit and live. Ignorance would have you believe a lot of things. Ignorance is wrong. Reason has been working hard to make life better for all Americans and humanity across the globe since before the discovery of fire. Reason wants a better life for you and for your family. Reason helped Ignaz Semmelweis discover in 1847 that hand washing could help prevent the transmission of disease, saving countless lives. In 1944, Reason helped Grace Hopper and Howard Aiken develop the Mark I computer. Reason took us to the moon, gave us all supercomputers in our pockets, and allows amputees to walk again through prosthetic technology. Reason has done all of this and has never accepted a cent in compensation. Reason reaches across the aisles to help those with faith make morally sound judgments and helps us all change our own worldview when new evidence is brought to light. Reason helps us all. Ignorance is wrong for America and wrong for the world. 
in this 2017, make your voice heard by telling ignorance it is totally wrong for you and the world by making reason your chosen philosophy and buy your tickets now for ReasonCon 3. Join us and our speakers and champions of reason, Lawrence Krauss, Matt Dillahunty, Aaron Raw, Callie Wright, Jim Craig, and Emily Templewood. Also, a whole lot of your favorite podcasters, as well as your new friends, old friends, and those unmet in a celebration of all that is reasonable. Join us in helping to put reason back in the driver's seat of America and the world. Reason Gone 3 will be held in Hickory, North Carolina on April 21st and 22nd, 2017. Please get your tickets at ReasonNC.com. That's ReasonNC.com. I'm Miss B. Haven, and I approve this message. Welcome to another edition of the Palaver here on the Podunk Polymath Podcast. This week I have somebody with me that I have met online and is in a group of which I'm a member. He is also a member of the Angry Black Rant group. And we're not all angry black ranters, but we, some of us just stand by and watch the fireworks, but he's a great guy. And he, he agreed to come on and speak to me tonight about a very interesting subject and something I've actually thought about on occasion. So if you would join me in welcoming William Ferguson, how's it going? I'm great. Good. Good to hear it. Uh, I'm also angry. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm angry on occasion. It just depends on the side. <laughs> I'm, I'm just angrier, I guess, in text. Not so in voice. It depends if I'm drunk or not. Maybe it, it kind of changes. But <laughs> um, I'm extremely sober right now. Oh, well, that's okay. You know, we'll get you angry anyway. We'll get you semi-riled up maybe. We'll see. And when I have you on, you have spoken to me about being a... Well, the main thing is that you were a member of a pentecostal religion i guess you could say when you were younger and i thought and you had spoken to me about how it was interesting because your parents were not particularly religious but they let you explore this uh religion which i thought was interesting and also uh well you happen to be uh gay and i <laughs> not that you know it's just that it, tell me first of all tell me about your kind of your background your parents and what they were like or whatever and how growing up and all that stuff they were divorced so i went back and forth between them a lot but like they were pretty good parents like i can't really say like i had a bad childhood i had a lot of like um social difficulties and like emotional problems when i was a kid so like i didn't really have friends well why didn't you have friends were you just kind of natural because i was like that too i've always been i mean i had like a lot of social difficulties like i wasn't good at making friends oh and i had like a lot of emotional problems and stuff like that and so like i got picked on and like bullied a lot and i definitely think like being effeminate and stuff like the kids kids are mean you know they pick up on that shit and they like oh yeah oh yeah they find things to pick on you about but like other than that kind of stuff i can't really say like i had a bad childhood so you had a fairly normal childhood you just had issues with people being dicks or or whatever basically which i had to deal with as well mostly because i was sort of uh i don't know a loner i guess when I got older, I was more introverted and wasn't so interested in, in the, the reindeer games, I guess. Uh, and for the record, I prefer the term queer because I think it's a little more, like, open. Okay, that's fine. And that, I, I've always found it interesting because when I was younger, queer was a, not a good word to use. It was considered, like, a slur or whatever. I think it's kind of like a, um, being reclaimed. Yeah, some of the older... Gen, like my generation and older kind of I've heard still have problems with that word because of that stigma that was attached to it. And they're having the heart. I, I can understand that, but I can also understand wanting to reclaim the term as well. Minorities often do that. Uh, and they should do that. Reclaim those terms, empower, you know, just empower the, yourself and not let it be used against you or whatever. So I can understand that. Sometimes I kind of feel like. I kind of had my childhood with my parents and then I kind of had like the childhood, like when we went to visit my relatives, 
like sometimes it kind of felt like or looking back maybe it kind of I could see it being like two different childhoods because yeah let's talk about you had mentioned your you gotten this idea from going to the uh, started going to this uh, church or whatever from your relatives we were always like my family's always been really close so I spent like most of my summers with them like I would go stay with my grandma for one week and like an aunt different aunt each week like stuff like that and so they definitely like exposed me to it but like even like okay younger than that like maybe when I was like six some of my relatives were living in Virginia in the same area as us so at that time my mom was like experimenting with like one of those non-denominational kind of churches where they say like that they're not denominational, but it's really like code word for strict evangelical, like women must wear dresses type of churches. And so some of our relatives like went there with us. So I think she was experimenting with it, but then she really stopped going because the people were so sexist, like trying to tell her what she could wear and stuff like that. So she stopped going. So I stopped going. But like a few years later, I would go stay with my relatives during the summer and they would take me to their church with them. So I definitely think somehow, even though my parents aren't really religious, I got indoctrinated and they didn't think that it was necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's hard to tell, you know. I mean, it sounds like to me that you were just interested because of what you saw. I don't think you were necessarily indoctrinated. There just, it seems to me there was something there that you perceived that you were interested in, uh, because you're, you said you went with your mother to this other church. A little bit, not for very long. Not for very long, but you saw what they, the reason why she left. But you went. I mean, I was told it was a good thing when everyone around you thinks it's a good thing. And you're a kid, you don't know any better, so you think it's a good thing. Yeah, I can. I mean, I don't think it's as as bad as as some, but I, it's probably still a little bit. When you're a kid, you're easily impressionable, so I can understand that. Well, my uncle would definitely like take me aside with his daughter, and he would like he was in Bible school and stuff. This is all between like the ages of I don't know six and ten. The timeline is rough for me, and he would like read the Bible to us and like tell us about it and so i i feel like i was definitely taught to think it was true to some degree do you remember thinking wow this really must be true or were you just like yeah whatever (laughs) i don't i don't remember questioning that kind of stuff because even though like now today my parents aren't particularly particularly religious i think they thought like having like a faith background in your childhood or something like that was good for you. So they didn't really like stop it from happening. Yeah. Let's, let's kind of drill down on that a little bit. I find it interesting that it's kind of, it was kind of a given that having a faith based background somehow was a good thing. And I I I find that extremely interesting and not uncommon uh, because up, I mean, you always heard, I well, I always heard the term a good Christian Christian was basically like, it was assumed that that meant you were a good person if you're a good Christian or whatever, right? Yeah. So, so that's it's just part of our culture, I think. And even people who aren't necessarily overly, overly religious still kind of cling on to that cultural norm of it. If you're Well, if you're a Christian, then that must mean you're a good person. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think that it's totally part of our culture, at least in the case of some more modern people perhaps they might expand it to like some kind of religion it makes you a good person but it doesn't matter which one yeah i will hmm. I, I, hmm. <laughs> sort of uh, as long as it's a christian denomination or buddhism maybe not islam no sir you can no no especially now you think oh mm-mm. i Basically, any religion that's majority white is what they meant, <laughs> I think. is Anything that brown people do, they're not cool with uh, in general. Well, let me say where I live now, like, it can be a little bit hippy-dippy. And these people, like, oh, as long as you're spiritual, like, that's all that matters. It doesn't, it can be Islam. It can be, oh, it can be your own thing that you made up. Like, you just have to be spiritual. That doesn't even make 
I never understood the spiritual tag. <laughs> Me neither. But I just want to illustrate that I really think like the concept of having some kind of like faith is so important to people that I mean they might prefer Christianity, but like even my relatives like they think Catholics are even like probably demon possessed, but probably to some degree they're like, well, at least they're Catholic, at least they're not atheists. Oh, you don't even. <laughs> Uh, you may know about the history of Catholicism in this country. Florida, man, they did not like Catholics at all. In fact, they, when JFK was running for election, that was still a big thing. He had to give a speech saying he wasn't going to, you know, kowtow to the Pope or whatever. Because people are really frightened, thought he was going to, like, be working for Rome or whatever. For yeah. The, for the Vatican. And I just, this, wow, bizarre. They hated Catholic. Oh, Catholic. Ooh, read up some history and you may have, like I said, but Catholic, they didn't know like papists or whatever they called them that too as well. But, uh, you live in the, the Maryland area, Maryland. I'm such a red. The DC metro area. Yeah. DC metro area. I can look out the window and see the DC line. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not really, but it's close. Were you raised there? Is that where you're I from? was raised in Northern Virginia. Northern, so yeah, that's pretty much. It's the same area. Yeah, Northern Virginia area is pretty much that, that circle, I guess, that radius from DC or whatever. So you kind of grew up in this way. Uh, these, you speak of these hippy dippy types or whatever. Are these the type, is this the type of culture that you were raised in? No, it's so, it's difficult to explain because I really feel like I was kind of raised like s sort of mostly secular by my parents. But then like we would go visit my relatives or I would go stay with my grandma or my aunt in the summer. They would take me to church with them. And I think when I was like eight, I just believed it because I saw that they believed it. When I got older, you know, later I actively like wanted to believe it. So I kind of feel like I had sort of a secular upbringing. As well as, like, they just kind of, like, let my relatives take me because it's good for him. Like, what we were talking about before. Right, right. I think my dad was probably, like, more skeptical of it, like, in general for for longer. Uh, my mom, like, even though she doesn't believe it, just, like, cannot be critical of it for some reason. I can't. I, I, I do, like, a little, um, uh, uh, what do you call the Aristotle or Plato thing? Socratic method. Right, right. Oh, I got them both wrong, didn't I? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I do like a little bit of that sometimes, and I, I haven't been able to get that much out of her. Like, I can't figure out why she can't be critical of it, even though she, I'm pretty sure she thinks it's bullshit. I don't know. Some people are just when they, it's comfortable for them. And when they try to get outside of their, and this is anybody, I, I think this is human nature. Once you go, well, most people are just, they get outside their little comfort zone and they get uncomfortable and they don't want to be uncomfortable, you know? Maybe. I think that's but a lot. neither of them actively participate in in any religion. And so that's why I'm so fascinated that, like, maybe religion has done it. Like, maybe religion has been so successful at saying you need to be religious that even people who don't really believe in it still think that their kids should, like, be exposed to it. It has deep roots in this country, religion does, definitely. Yeah. When did you, what, what was the impetus? Because you started going to this, whatever church it was, by yourself. No, no, no. Uh, so, because we live, like, they lived in, I should have said this, they lived in Pennsylvania. Okay. And I lived in Virginia. Oh, okay. And I don't, probably around, like, the age of, 14 i definitely knew i was like queer at that point i definitely knew i was attracted to men i didn't like know too much stuff or how much more complicated that could be i i don't remember like exactly where i would have learned that like you can't like come out and you have to try to fix it but i definitely went through a phase where i knew it and i was trying not to be you were trying not to be gay or queer, I'm sorry. Right, right, exactly. Okay. Like, I don't remember too much hateful preaching when I would go to church with them in the years, like, prior to high school. 
So I don't know where I, I, I picked up the internal, like the internalized like homophobia or the internalized like queer phobia, whatever it is. You picked it up from culture in general, probably. That's what I think now. I mean, I definitely remember relatives like having conversations around me like, oh, the poor homosexuals, you know, they need to repent. They are just they're they're you know, those types of conversations that they have. But I don't remember any like direct like homophobic preaching. So it probably came from the culture at large. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a true, even if you're not an active member of a religion like you said before, I think it's still ingrained in us. There's deep homophobia and that goes for of course that and that goes for misogyny and all kinds of different stuff. Why we're so, we're so we're afraid of nudity but we love violence, you know. Ugh. All that kind of good stuff. America got stuck with the Puritans. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh that's what happened, you know. And I find it so ironic because they were trying to escape religious oppression. They just brought their own religious oppression, you know, to this country. Their own brand of it. And Europe got out of it, but we're still in it for the most part, so. There is, like, so much weird, I want to say backwards kind of stuff. I feel like that's not the exact, that's not the best word. I think I'm going to think of a better word, but there's, like, so much strange I think it's related to sexual repression and stuff like that. Like when I was 14, I found a church in my area that was kind of like the church my relatives went to when I was growing up. And I tried really hard to get involved with it, but I was like a super like socially like anxious kid. And like I was hiding my sexuality or trying to at least. So, you know, when you start going, you know, have you ever been to one of these big like mega church kind of churches where they're like very welcoming and it's like very polished and it just seems so great. But then behind the scenes, there's like all kinds of drama, like like just as bad as like any kind of political like scandal that you can imagine. Oh, yeah, I I, I can imagine that. And they, you know, they set me up with like a buddy and... She was supposed to be my friend and, like, help me get involved in the church. But, like, it just ended up backfiring. Like, every Friday I would go and I would, like, try to find her. And I was just trying to make a friend or whatever. And she was supposed to help me. But she ended up, like, accusing me of, like, stalking her or something like that. Oh, my. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. And I just wonder, like, does that go back to, like, sexual repression Somehow, does it go back to she was probably oppressed because she was like a young woman in a like a, a strict form of religion like that? Does it go back to they were picking up on some kind of like like femininity or something, and people were like freaking out? Like, when did you start going to this uh, particular church? That was probably like when I was fourteen. Do you know what uh, denomination it was? Um, they called it like the community church. So it was like uh -huh. one of those churches that pretends to be like non-denominational, but really it's like a very strict, like evangelical fundamentalist interpretation of the Bible. Oh, so it's the very, same. Was this the same? Pretty one? much the same. Yeah, yeah. Just in it with a different name, you know, different marketing. Uh -huh. Okay. Different branding, if you will. <laughs> what was the impetus behind you going to this why did you decide you wanted to start going to this church? I think like I was sort like maybe the summer before it, um, I had probably visited my relatives again and I went to church with them a few times. And like, I really wanted to like find the Holy spirit or something. Cause remember, like no one was telling me really to like do too much critical thinking. Like my dad probably told me to do some critical thinking like sometimes, but also like he didn't want to like tell his kids like, too much of what to do because he really believes that they need to like learn their own lessons and like that kind of stuff. Well, I find that extremely interesting actually, because you, you basically did it on your own, which is, we always tell our kid, well, if I had a kid, I would tell the kid, you know, I want you to figure shit out on your own. I want you to blaze your own trail, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. even if that means you go into <laughs> to a, a, an institution that I would absolutely disagree with on everything they, they stand for, you know? So I think that's interesting 
And I think my mom probably thought it was a good idea. Like, oh, you can make friends. And I don't, I sometimes wonder, was she thinking like, oh, they have to be friends with him and he's so awkward and he's so antisocial. Like, it'll just, it'll be good for him. You know what I mean? Like, I can understand that. I mean, it sounds like, like that they were genuinely concerned about you, wanted you to, they had good intentions. Yeah. They wanted you to have friends and even if maybe it was misguided a little bit, I don't know. I don't want to make any judgments on that because it's not my, you know. No, and I don't want to judge them because I think they did overall a good job. Like, I'm still close with them. Yeah. And they know exactly what I believe now, and I don't think they're totally, like, comfortable with it, but. Well, my mom's not totally comfortable with me being an atheist. So. <laughs> I mean, of course not, because, I mean, my dad actively tells me, like, so that's just another religion, and I'm like, no, not quite. That's. That's not how this works. That's not... <laughs> no, but, you know, he identifies as, like, a Taoist or something. Okay, or, like, that's... the universe is my god. Yeah. I don't really know. It doesn't really make any sense because we pretty much know what the universe is kind of at this point. Yeah, I, well, no, shit. We know. I mean, like, we sort of know, like, what it is, not, like, how it is. Yeah, I, I never... To me, that's a cop out. It's, I don't know. I mean, there's gases and planets in it and like some matter. Yeah. I mean, we have a general idea, but we're nowhere near figuring out <laughs> even a, 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 a minuscule part of it out. But I'll see what you're saying. I'm just, and I'm always asking him, like, what do you mean by that? Like, what does, if the universe is your God, like, what does that do for you? Like, how do you, like, find it? Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, sometimes like fortuitous or like serendipitous things happen to me and like that's God and I'm like or it could just be serendipity or good fortune yeah it's just <laughs> I think he just wants like deeper meaning and I'm just kind of like okay I just try to find meaning in everything I do because I have a brain yay but so if I can just say something like about that church I think I was seeking it hard because i like i didn't want to be gay or queer and other than like that girl like accusing me of like stalking her when i was just trying to be her friend i mean i don't remember if i was like being too forward or anything but i definitely was not like flirting or anything i was just trying to be nice they would like break us down into groups like the boys could never know what the girls were learning about and the girls could never learn know what the boys were learning about and what we learned about was like porn is so bad and they would just like scream at us about the devil and pornography and like looking back it's actually quite terrifying they screamed literally screamed i mean they they got heated like like they were really passionate about it like you have to be careful like you can't let these demons in your house and this pornography is so bad and i bet you all the pastors were at home jerking off to some nasty porn themselves but no they didn't have to they got fucking altar well it's not altar boys there no we didn't have any of that there there were no altar boys now um listening to podcasts and like hearing people's stories and reading i have a good suspicion that the girls probably were told like a little bit about porn but Those types of religions, like, tend to, um, I think they sort of think, like, oh, women just don't have any sexuality or, like, they don't watch porn. So I have a pretty good suspicion they were probably learning about, like, how to be good wives and, like, what does the Bible say about, like, that kind of stuff, you know? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Housekeeping and how to please your man and... That kind of thing, you know. And don't have sex. Don't have sex. Don't have sex. Until you're married. Until you're married. And then have lots of sex, of course. Yeah, as long as Jesus is your third, you know, you're having a menage a trois with Jesus, basically, is what's going on. (laughs) But, yes, I have family members that, I, I mean, like, the wives, like, will watch, like, watch movies before their husbands watch it to make sure there's not too many sex scenes. And they, like, supervise it. They will, like, fast-forward it so that because they believe that, like, men, if they see, like, sexual images, it, like, affects them so much stronger or something like that and that they have to, like, police it for them, you know? Like, it's their duty. 
That's not unusual, and that's kind of, you know. Yeah, it's weird, though. Why did you say you entered and started going to this church? Is it because you got a good vibe from when you went to see him to the a similar church with your relatives? Yeah, I think so. And you just kind of wanted to, I don't know, you said you wanted to find the Holy Spirit or whatever. I, I think because I, you know, I was brought up in a culture that said like some kind of spirit spirituality is good and that's what the people around me did i was like oh this must be the right one so i didn't question it too much and then on top of that i think i wanted to like find god for myself or something like that as well as i was trying to suppress my own like sexuality right the sexuality issue which i i could i can understand that and that's sad that we have to do that or people have to do that feel like they have to suppress their sexuality in, in this culture and it's getting better but it's mm -hmm. we're, still, we're still a long way i used to get weepy about this but i don't get weepy about it anymore because like i'm pretty much over it now but i used to pray like every night for like three years just plead with jesus so just to wake up straight and it never happened isn't that sad that's heartbreaking. It's really sad, but honestly, I blame our culture for that as much as I blame Christianity. Yeah, it's it's like I said, bad ideologies, regardless of what the root is. And I just, religion is one of the worst because it's been around and because it's part of our psyche, apparently. We're predisposed to be religious, apparently, according to recent studies. To Really? Th well, re <laughs> The or thing, to follow the, the herd? Uh, well, uh, well, that's well. There, we are herd animals, really. But also, we're predisposed to think there's something else out there. It, it's not necessarily a religion per se. Of course, that's how it usually manifests itself. But we're we're kind of we think there's something else out there, and we're never happy with what we have, right? Yeah, we're always seeking. And we're, uh, curiosity's been mankind's blessing and its curse. So, you know, unfortunately, but. That's that's a religion that has been a, a huge part of. It's been with us for as long as probably as humans have existed, probably one in, in one way or another. And we're not getting rid of it, uh, anyway, despite what some strident atheist may say. We're not. It's not going anywhere. So you can just go ahead and forget that. But I think it's getting weaker. It's getting weaker, and it'll get weaker. It'll it'll become it, it'll become less influential surely but it's not going away and just like you don't want to suppress any movement because it'll just go underground and that's what would happen and when you do that when you shove something underground it gets ugly quick so that's true i would rather it be out in the open where i can see it and keep track of it but that's just that's just me that's just my personal opinion so uh how long were you a member of this particular church it must have been like a really short time because um, as soon as the weird stuff happened where the girl was like accusing me of stalking her and then pe people, I ha I'm going to have to guess from that church probably started. Um, it, it must have been like her friends or something like people were sort of cyber bullying me, like messaging me like you have to leave her alone. And I was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to the church and like. Um, that pretty much like stopped me from going like I was kind of like well fuck this look at how these people are acting but I still was like trying to believe it on my own I was like I don't need to go to that church like I have my bible like I'm just gonna walk around school with it like a re like an idiot I almost said a bad bad ableist word and I'm not gonna do it technically idiot is too but oh I didn't know it's fine it's fine it's it's difficult I've had that problem myself I think a lot of it's people you just you're used to using these words and you don't really honestly don't know of another word to use because you're so used to using that word yeah. you're like, what the hell else am I supposed to say there's other I mean there's a website for I forgot what it's called but there's a website that identifies uh, alternatives to ableist language, but anyway, that's, I do my best. Yeah, I know. No, that's fine. I, 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 I was a bit of a dick there, maybe being a little nitpicky. I guess maybe, but <laughs> no, no. I want to know. I want to know, and I don't take it personally. So, I have personally heard that, and idiot used to be an actual uh, a mental term. It used to be a sci well, not scientific. They used to idiot imbecile. 
were terms for actual terms for people with with a certain amount of IQ. It makes sense. Yeah, it was actual. These were actual terms, and they passed into common you know, speech or whatever. So, you know, but whatever. It's well, yeah, that's fine. So you left the church because of this. Did you see anything why in your short stint there that was like super just? I don't know, bizarre or anything like that? They took it pretty literally. I don't think that particular church did, like, a lot of tongues, but they definitely, I, ah, my memory is vague. People got, like, pretty, like, fired up and would kind of, like, freak out and, like, pass out kind of thing from time to time. Not, like, pass out, but, like, I guess they were in such a fervor that, and then, I mean, I think a lot of it was mimic mimicry, like, people... Like, oh, the other people like fall over. So then they're con- like, they, they think that they're feeling like this the Holy Spirit thing and like falling over. I don't know if you've ever seen that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen documentaries. I mean, but I don't remember them doing too much of that kind of stuff. The only weird stuff was like sort of how they treated me, even though they were supposed to be like nice and she was supposed to be my buddy or whatever. And, like, the groups where they would separate us into, like, these gendered groups and, like, talk about pornography, like, on and on and on and just, like, terrify us. Like, if you see porn, like, like just, you know, hell and all that kind of, like, brimstone kind of, like, stuff. That doesn't, I I don't understand, even today, even our modern understanding of motivations and psychology that you would try to use that technique because it never fucking works. You make something more taboo, especially when you're younger, it's going to make you want to do it more. I I mean, it was like only 2001, so it wasn't that modern. Well, I mean, (laughs) I mean, you know. I'm joking. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I just, I guess I don't understand. We keep making the same mistakes. It's not just religion necessarily. People in general keep making the same fucking mistakes over and over again. You left the church. And I was kind of doing it on my own. Like, I'm just going to read my Bible. Like, I don't need the church. Right. So where did that lead you? How did that go for you? Nowhere. It didn't really lead me anywhere. I just, and also I have to say, like every good Christian, I didn't actually really spend that much time reading it. I just had the book in my possession, you know, because I thought it was powerful or something like that. So you never actually really you didn't do Bible study or anything like that? I mean, yeah, we did some Bible study like in the church and I read some of it. But I'm just saying because I was in high school at the time, like relative to the amount of reading like I was doing and I was being facetious about good Christians not really reading it. Like I never like read the whole thing like front to back. I never in the amount of time that I actually spent reading it, like probably wasn't as much as reading stuff for school. Hmm. Okay. You were doing on, did you have any, any friends or, I mean, did you have any friends? <laughs> you loser? No. Honestly, not really. <laughs> Maybe like one. Well, I just meant as far as, did you have any companions in this, this kind of Christian path you were going down or whatever? Not really. Just when I would go visit with my family members, I would talk with them about it and they would encourage me. Okay. So how long did this, how long did this last? This, uh, I guess you could call it a phase of you. I think it was. I think it was a phase. I, I think when I was like 16, I moved. I wasn't getting along with my mom and my stepdad. And so I asked to move. So I moved in with my dad and my stepmom. And I've already said a few things about my dad. So that household, you know, it wasn't like particularly religious. Not that my mom's household was particularly religious either, but I guess maybe I was, like, rebelling. So I was still, like, into it, but it was less and less. And maybe this is what got me to start thinking about it a little bit more. But my stepmom was, like, a really liberal Episcopalian. So we started going to this, like, really liberal Episcopal church where I'm pretty sure, like, the pastor was, like, gay and they just sang songs and, like everyone was real nice and they did things completely differently. And so I started going, wait a minute, like there's other kinds of Christianity and they don't agree with all this stuff that like I was told, like what's going on here? 
Hmm, interesting. So when did this start? You said you probably uh, when I was like sixteen or seventeen. All right. So you started this, like you said. I'm sorry. You moved. Yeah, I moved in with them. And you found out this new kind of liberal Christianity. Okay. And so for a little while, of course, I would ask my relatives, like, oh, we were standing for so long, like, and I, my knees were getting weak. And, you know, they would tell me, like, oh, it's because Episcopalians don't really have the Holy Spirit. Like, they don't really know Jesus. So you're weak and you're feeling like that because you're the only one with the Holy Spirit in their church. And I thought I was, like, fucking special, you know? And I came to find out, like, much later, like, if you stand with your knees locked for that long, like, anybody, you will get woozy and weak. It's some kind of weird, like, biological thing. Yeah. So there's, like, a total scientific explanation for it. But I found that out, like, I don't know, five years later. Yeah. I don't know why you were thinking scientific explanations in regards to anything religious. But <laughs> No, I mean, when, when I, I found out I know. why I actually thought I was feeling what I was feeling. I know. Just think it's anyway. I, at the time, I wasn't thinking any kind of scientific explanations. Wait, I remembered something. I haven't talked about this stuff in so long. Like, I had a teacher. I just remembered all of high school, a science teacher, who was an open atheist, and he was never like, "Oh, you're wrong," but he would just like, "Why do you believe that? Like, have you thought about that?" Like, he would sometimes talk to us, and I went to like a small school for like kids that needed like emotional support so he could kind of get away with like occasionally asking a little question like that. Mm, That's, that's pretty interesting. Actually, you wouldn't fuck, you'd be fired here in the South for that kind of shit. (laughs) But I mean, cause it was like kind of private, but like the public school system had to send you kind of, I understand because basically like, you know, at the time I wasn't doing well enough in school. So they were like, you need extra support or whatever. But it's a total like real accreditation or whatever. Like you get the same like high school diploma as everybody else. You just have a counselor you can talk to like as much as you want. So getting back to uh, your experience, this other, this newer church you were talking about, how long were you uh, there at that church? It wasn't long because my family like wasn't going that often really either. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we went like all that many times per se. Mm, okay. But it was enough that it probably planted some seeds of like sort of, wait, some of this doesn't add up because I was noticing like, you know, discrepancies. And I think I was starting to have like more questions. Ah, so this is kind of, you're saying the seeds of, of disbelief, sort of not believing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because only like a few years later, like age 18 and 19, like I would think about this kind of stuff like, constantly and i noticed all the inconsistencies but like of course no one ever like said the word atheist or like no one ever said to me like oh you don't actually have to believe this like so i had all these like what would we call it cognitive dissonance i had a lot of cognitive dissonance yeah i can understand that i mean you're told one thing but then you're learning other something different and you're not sure how to reconcile the two so that makes sense okay exactly and like now that i think about it it was probably like a little bit selfish on my dad's part. Like he wanted, like, I think they were engaged at the time. I said stepmom because she became my stepmom, but I think he wanted to marry her and she wanted to have like pastoral counseling at her liberal church. So, you know, I think it was kind of selfish. He he was like, okay, so let's go to church, like kind of to make her happy, you know? Oh, that's so sad. Ah, uh, you know, People do what they do. I know, no, I, I mean, I understand. I mean, we do things that's for people we love, and I can understand that. So, I mean, religion shouldn't be different than any other any other thing, I guess, necessarily. But I have to give her like great credit in a way because, like, knowing her like exposed me to people who identified as Christian but would still read like, uh, what is the Hindu book called, like the Bhagavad Gita or something. And so that was, that was enough for me to like, be like, oh wait, other people are like Christian, but they're not like my relatives. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, it kind of gives you a, especially if you have a skeptical mind, you're just like, wait a minute, there's different denominations. They believe different things. 
Mm-hmm, it exactly. Start, it starts making you think, well, if that, why are they so different? If it, the message is supposed to be the same, you know, and it kind of gets you, it starts you thinking about everything in general, not just Christianity, but religion in general. And we lack that, unfortunately, this too much in this country. Not enough critical thinking. And you obviously display that you do have critical thinking. So that's, I guess I did all along. Yeah, that's a good thing. It's so fascinating because, like, the last time I saw her, like, she wanted to pray over the meal. And she was like, well, everyone believes in some kind of, like, spirituality at the table, right? And I was like, no. So it's so fascinating. Even her, super tolerant, like, doesn't really care, still assumes that everyone is spiritual. Like, still assumes that that's better somehow. Yeah, for some reason, you just made me think of, of course, I'm, you, I know you list Angry Black Grant and the intro with uh, Cat Williams, he has Cat Williams in the intro or whatever. Oh, the stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> Is that any, any atheist in the house? <laughs> you stupid That's motherfuckers. What it's like. You I don't it, yeah. it's, it's interesting. I don't care what god you believe in. You got to be a special kind of stupid to make uh if you can't make up a god if you didn't have one or something like that. Yeah. It's that whole phenomenon. That's what we keep coming back to. Like, why do people assume that it's better, not equal? It just sounds, to, uh, I mean, just in general, why do you need somebody over you? You know, that's what, that's what it feels like to me is like, I just think it's an interesting concept. I mean, to anybody in general, general, but especially coming from that, I don't know. I, I, I've never understood that whole d- dynamic. Anyway. I think, I always think like two, things about it like why is the assumption that some kind of faith is better why is the starting assumption not it's equal to not having it and the other thing i always think about is like even in our language like referring to like lord jesus it's like medieval language for like even in the medieval times like who was above the peasants and stuff like that yeah the lords you know feudalism right so it, it it is referring to like sort of like an overlord or something like that. Well, it's because that's just uh, again, it just seems like we have to have some somebody over it. We I don't understand it. Even rich people, some rich people, and of course they say this. That most of their overlords are money anyway, but <laughs> they they need something. They want something to believe in or whatever. I don't. I can understand. Like I said before, it's just kind of this human thing of want, needing to believe in something a higher whatever it's kind of this this urge to believe in that higher being or higher power or whatever the fuck you want to call it and it i think it's good in a way in that it ke- keeps us kind of driven towards exploring uh different things and trying to achieve different things and trying to understand ourselves better as as human beings but at the same time it's also destructive because we're sitting here destroying each other as a race because of this kind of quest. And, you know, especially people who think their God is more, is more powerful than somebody else's or whatever, or is, is more right than somebody else's. I don't know. But don't they usually think that it's the only actual one? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, some are, um, of course, Christian, especially, uh, the Protestants say, I was raised Church of Christ, well, sort of. And what is that? It's just, basically, if you're not Church of Christ, then you're just not really Christian. Do they speak in tongues and stuff? No, it's nothing like that. It, it's pretty, uh, it's just pretty mainstream Christ, Christianity, Southern. Wait, Christian. is that, um, um, is that one of the, like, more liberal ones? I guess. I, I mean, it depends what you compare it to. I mean, compared to like hardcore Pentecostal snake handlers, you know, or something like that, maybe. My family does not handle snakes just as like a little caveat. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> if you're going to be Pentecostal, I want to have some fucking snakes. You know, they all don't the way. handle snakes, but they definitely like feel like they have special powers because of like, like, I don't think they would say it this way. But the way they talk about it, the way they act, I'm like, are you trying to be a superhero? Because they're, like, walking around and they're like, I can just, like, pray for things. I can just pray for things. One time I was visiting and my my 
cousin's like girlfriend at the time who he ended up marrying like called him like frantic like I'm at the um the rest stop and there's a big storm blowing in and like I'm so scared you have to come pick me up and like he started like praying like for the storm to go away as if he could control it like he was storm or something from the (laughs) x-men and I remember even at that age maybe 16 even though I was like believing I think at that time asking him like but that doesn't make sense like the weather is already doing what the weather is doing like it's been set in motion like how could you pray for it to go away like even if like the lord is favoring you or something like that yeah no it just it it defies any logical sense there's no point in even trying trying to understand that at all that's why i don't even i don't even bother to be honest but i apologize i'm i think i'm getting church of christ mixed up with a different one that i heard of that like has like gay people in it and like is really uh, liberal. You're talking and, about like, Uni- United Church of Christ, I think. Is what yeah, you're maybe. Yeah, there. I know what you're talking about, though. There's, yeah, no, no, it's not that one. <laughs> Trust me. I have to say, my pet peeve a little bit sometimes. I'm, I am confused by like sometimes like queer people who stay religious, like especially the ones that were exposed to like Baptist or like Pentecostal. Like, and then they just jump to, like, a liberal version of it. But, like, they were probably, like, targeted, you know, like, they were, um like, preached at or something. But they don't, like, question it. They just go to a different branch. Yeah, it's hard to overcome, though. I mean, I don't, I, I don't try to judge anybody on that because it's really, if, especially if you're indoctrinated from a young age, it's really difficult for people to overcome that sort of indoctrination, even if you have your... Uh, queer, or whatever you, whatever term you want to use. It's really difficult to overcome that. And I, I don't even want to think about people like you who are praying, who are at one point were praying to not be gay or whatever. That's horrible. And that's the kind of thing that indoctrination does. It makes you question yourself, you know. I was pleading. Yeah, yeah pleading. I mean, that's horrible. I don't want to make anybody upset, but I feel like people should know like what people go through because of that. Yeah. I I think it's important that people do understand that even if they don't necessarily can't empathize per se, because they, they, they've never gone through it. They can sympathize at least, you know, and try to understand what's going on and what it would be like to basically not be able to be yourself. Your very essence is being, you're told that you are, you're going to hell because of something that you can't control or whatever. That's what they think you can. So yeah. And that fucking conversion therapy bullshit is sickening and it's still, Oh, that is sickening. It's it's still legal in in most States. Really? Yeah. There's, I mean, there's been a movement of the outlaw in some States, uh, California, uh, New Jersey. I think there's a couple other ones, but, it's still, for the most part, it's legal, as far as I know. So, uh, I mean, so no one like ever suggested that to me, and that wasn't really like talked about well, that's good. in my particular like church experiences. But I do remember one time when I was visiting with my cousins, and like I was a believer. This was like high school years, but I always had questions. I always had like a few questions, but not enough to like talk me out of it, and. I remember one time, like, they started talking about their, like, youth pastor at their church. I think he was the youth pastor. And they were like, you know, like, he was gay. Like, he was gay. And, like, he cured himself. And now he lives over there in that house with Mm. his his wife. And, like, I just remembered that just now. Mm. That just popped into my head. That, mm. It's sad, right? Yeah, the kind of self-deception you have to go through. When did you, after this experience of this church you went to, was, were you pretty much done with church after that? Yeah. I mean. I never went back to any sort of like organized church. And when did you realize you were an atheist, I guess? Is that a longer battle, a longer journey? Yeah. <laughs> that was longer to fully, to fully have those words, like to have that word. Or to use that word, um, it was 
So I went through like the typical phases. Like I, I want first I wanted to be like a liberal Christian. I was like, oh, I don't have to believe like the whole thing, and I'm gonna like accept my sexuality. And then that kind of didn't work out for me because I had too many questions. Like why, like why should it be that some people like should go to hell and like other people shouldn't? And like if they're like there are some farmers in some rural, rural country where like Christian missionaries never reach them and they never um, think about um, they never like hear that the religion of Christianity even exists. Like why should they go to hell? Like that's not fair. Yeah. I so I tried to be like, I tried to be like Wiccan and pagan for a while. I tried to be like, um, like a Celtic Druid or something for a while. Mm. <laughs> so you just, you just went the whole spirit, the discovery, the journey for self discovery, like many people do, I think. I tried to be Buddhist for a while. That was like my last ditch. Like, oh, they don't really like have a god, but like, I can reach Nirvana or something. <laughs> yeah. So you took, I mean, that's not unusual. There's a lot of people who do the path to self discovery and just go through all these different things and just finally come to the conclusion that they just don't believe there's really anything, a greater power per se at all, you know? So I don't know. That had to be like age 19 to 20. Three that I was doing all that um, and from time to time I would think like oh maybe I'll go to like a Unitarian like a Unitarian like Universalist church or something and like because I just want to be around people but I never did it and I think by like the age of 23 I was kind of like oh you know like I'm not really like religious I'm just spiritual whatever that means yeah yeah <laughs> I wasn't trying any religions anymore, like nothing like that. I had kind of this thing in the back of my mind, like from the age of like 23 until like just a few years ago, like, like, um, I sort of knew in the back of my mind, like, I don't think any of this is real. Um, and I would like, I would like Google, like, what is the definition of non-theist or like agnostic or like pantheist? Yeah. And I would yeah. try to like figure out like, Oh, which one like applies to me? Um, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> yeah. And I had like a friend. Um, her dad was just like, I'm an atheist. And he would like ask me questions and talk to me about it. And he kind of like helped me to like figure out, like to kind of accept it because, and my friend too was, was like, yeah, you know, I don't believe it. And her dad was like a firebrand atheist, you know, like, yeah. um, but like, I didn't really like say it to anyone. I didn't fully, I didn't fully like accept it yet. It's a stigma attached to it. Exactly. So that's the main reason why I think. And then I started listening to podcasts and oh my gosh, like I was so terrified. Like I was nervous. Like if I listen to this, like what's going to happen to me? <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's I it's so laughable now, but I was like, "What's gonna happen to me?" Like, I'm gonna start worshiping Satan and you know, eating babies and stuff. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't really think that at that time. But uh, I was being hyperbolic. But I know what you're saying. No, but for a long time, even when I kind of admitted it to myself. I still was like kind of afraid of like the devil, even though I was like pretty sure it wasn't real. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's a lot of that. Trust me. I've, I've yeah. Heard a lot. The kind of residual fear of Satan or being, you know, going to hell and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Even, I even like there was a challenge on the internet, uh, YouTube, not it was a while ago. Basically, it was like uh, the only unforgivable sin, according to the Bible, is renouncing the Holy Spirit or whatever. And there were I've that, still never done that. Yeah, there are kids that, and they were going on there and doing it or whatever. People going on there and doing it, and making YouTube videos, and I was like, and I had to, I felt myself have a twinge. I'm like, oh, that's kind of. Do we have to go that far? You know. <laughs> so Me too. He, I found. Even then, you know, it was kind of. 
I, was, I remember finding that one time and I was like, I watched one of the videos and I was terrified, terrified. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still there. I mean, even if you don't think you were affected, even if you're like me, who you're, my mother's really religious, but she's not one of those people who forces on anybody. It's still there for me, even though I didn't realize, I didn't think I was that. I, it's still a lot. There's a lot of residual stuff there for me. I didn't really realize and, and you don't really realize until it, you know, it comes up in some kind of way. And then you realize that there is kind of still twinges of stuff. Sometimes I hear things. I'm like, Oh, I'm, yeah, I don't know how comfortable I am with that, even though it's completely ridiculous. So I don't get scared of like divine like punishment or anything anymore. But when people start asking me like, Oh, do you know about the Bible or whatever? I actually get shaky and like nervous but i'm totally comfortable now being like oh yeah let's talk about that and asking them questions and not really giving away like exactly what i think about it right away yeah i mean it's just it's a process i think i think uh kind of getting close to the hour here do you have anything that you would like to plug or Mm. anything do you want people to be able to get in touch with you or would you just rather them go fuck themselves or Oops. um <laughs> i mean i don't really have like any like projects that i'm doing or anything like that i just have my facebook you just have your facebook page yeah well his name's william ferguson he's in lots of groups yeah. uh you may come across him if you listen to this podcast <laughs> You'll probably come across him. All five people who listen to this probably already know him anyway. So yeah, <laughs> he's an angry black rank group. Uh, are you in Trav's group? Um, what's by, that one? By skeptical, uh, by any uh, means group or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I listen to it. Oh, you well, okay. Yeah. Every once in a while, I like talk to Morgan and Trav on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So you'll come across if you're in the circle, our little circle, uh, the SJW slash. <laughs> Atheist circle or whatever you want to call it, I guess. It's you'll, the most you'll, circle. Yeah, that's super. That's one of the circles of hell, actually. They didn't tell you that. <laughs> that, that they kind of added that later uh, as an addendum, you know. But anyway, uh, yeah. So you know, if you come, he's a. I've talked to him on occasion. He just makes me cry sometimes. That's <laughs> a, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just fucking with you. No, but yeah, he's a cool I, guy to talk yeah. to. He's funny. I can make you cry if you want me to. No, that's all right. Yeah. I got plenty of other stuff going on that can make me do that. <laughs> trust me. But, uh, yeah, just go, you know, if you come across him, say hi to him. William Ferguson, he's on Facebook. If you come across him, just holler at him. He's a, he's a good guy, you know. Yeah. And, they can uh, add me. Yeah. And, I mean, if he's, if he thinks you're cool enough, you know, he'll no, add you. I'll, I'll add like anybody pretty much. Oh, uh, you may, you might want to. <laughs> I don't, I I don't want to add any MRAs. No, thank you. Yeah, you might want to. Anybody within reason, you know, let's just yes. say with it. I have one MRA that I keep on my Facebook just to mine for really fun posts to share in groups. That's kind of funny. But He's I'm... like the most confusing person. Like, Bernie supporter atheist is like anti libertarian, but like, hates women and like hates minorities and oh my gosh the posts just give me endless like laughing material so hey no shame in that i can understand that totally <laughs> so anyway well thanks for coming on and talking to me I, uh on kind of short notice uh, you're welcome i hope i didn't like go on and on too much no nah, it was cool and it was a great story and very fascinating i enjoyed talking to you you're a great person to talk to in general, so. Oh, that's so sweet. No one ever tells me that. Well, they need to tell you more often, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit them up on Facebook. So anyway, uh, thanks for coming on again, and uh, you take it easy. You too. That'll do it for this episode of the Podunk Polymath Podcast. I want to thank William Ferguson for coming in and speaking to me. It was a very intriguing conversation, and I learned a lot, actually, about this particular sect or denomination or whatever the fuck you want to call it. 
Uh, of course, you can come check me out on the usual places. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, all of Podunk Polymath. Just do a search, and you'll find me in those various locations. The music is by Dot Dot Dash. Of course, you can check them out on cdbaby.com slash cd slash dot dot dash. Go check them out on Facebook. The link is on the about page on podunkpolymath.com. I'm not going to read that long ass URL as I stated before because it's ridiculously complicated. Of course, if you want to become a member of the posse on Patreon and support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash the podunk polymath. And there's also a call in number. 615-378-POPO-7676, which also stands for freedom. So you can feel good knowing that you're supporting freedom by calling my hotline, which please, somebody just call it already. It's really hurting my feelings, I'm telling you. And I even figured out how to make it where you, when you click on the number on a cell phone or you you know you, you hit the highlighted text and it'll go to the number or whatever because I'm so clever like that, even though it's... Easy as hell in HTML to figure it out. So, again, thanks for listening to the show. And I'm going to tell you once again to go vote if you haven't already. This show will be out election eve that Monday before. So, make sure you go vote. And, of course, I'm talking about the U.S. Of course, in any country, you need to go vote anyway. But especially for people in the U.S., go vote. And I would encourage you to vote and just vote in general. But I'm not going to tell you how to vote. Except to say that you probably shouldn't vote for the the guy with the small hands and the orange hair. Just saying. You know, I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, until next time, y'all take it easy. Okay. Okay.